Welcome to Grammar 5N. In this booklet, we will have three explanation pages. We will cover do, does, did, verbals and prepositional phrases. We're going to learn about a positive and a positive phrases. And then we'll diagram with those a positives and a positive phrases. So let's jump right into do, does, did. Now, as you saw in the previous booklet, we will be covering a number of different types of helping verbs. So we'll jump right into do, does, did. They are very common helping verbs, just like verbs, just like may, might, must. With do, does, did, we often can create a question or a negative sentence with the main verb and the present tense, which can be hard to do when you have a present tense verb. So let's look at an example. We have do they shop every day? And here we can see that although they shop, it has um, the right subject verb agreement, it can be very difficult to create that um, question format without do. And same with the next sentence, we have Clarissa does not wait in line for an hour. Once again, we want to make this a negative sentence. She's not completing that action in an hour. Instead, what we need to add to help us create that negative format is add does or do. And so those are the two main reasons you're going to be seeing them. Um, another usage of do and does is to create emphasis. So let's look at a couple of examples of this. We have do start your tests and Ty does like broccoli. As you can see, you don't have to use these helping verbs. You could just say start your tests, but by including do start your tests, you're emphasizing the action of the verb. And then Ty does like broccoli. We're emphasizing that he does in fact like broccoli. We will not be putting a large emphasis on this um, type of usage of do and does. It's just something we want to make sure you're aware of when you do read and write in the future. And now we'll cover did. Did is a little different. It's used in the same ways to create emphasis, um, make a question or a negative sentence, but it establishes a past tense with that question or negative sentence while the main verb still remains in its base or present tense. So um, once again, we are going to focus on simply the context of creating a question or a negative sentence and not specifically the tense created by did. Just like we're not going to focus on the emphasis uh, do and does and did can create. So let's look at a couple of examples. Did they create a line by the door? Once again, did helps us to form that question and my sister did not attend the meeting. Once again, we are creating that negative format of the question, or sorry, of the statement with the help of did. So now we'll look at one more example. Um, and this is going to be the type of activity you'll see in the booklet. So the plumber did fix the leak. So once we have that all read out, we're going to identify our subject and verb and anything else in this sentence. So we know that the plumber is our subject. The action is he's completing is fix with did did fix, and then what was fixed? The leak. So I'm going to label that as my direct object. And now we're just going to go through and identify each part of these um, bits of activity. So first, what is our helping verb? Did. Did is our helping verb. Fix is our main verb. So what tense or form is that in? We could do present, perfect, or progressive. So in this instance, we have a present or base form of the verb. And then what type of verb is it? We could be linking, intransitive, transitive active, or transitive passive. Well, the main thing we need to look at is one, it is an action verb. So we know it's not a linking verb, it's some kind of action verb. And then we can see that the subject of the sentence is completing the action and leak is receiving the action. Therefore, we have the subject as the actor, as the doer of the verb, so it's not transitive passive, and we have something receiving the action, or the action is being transferred to an object, so we have a transitive active. And so now we can get into prepositional phrases with verbals. We first looked at this in the last booklet, 
um, 5M. So we're just going to expand upon it in this booklet. So here we have the books for referencing definitions are available. What we're going to ask you to do in this booklet is to pull out that prepositional phrase and I uh, analyze what's going on within it. So let's do that now. We have four referencing definitions and we can see we've got a gerund phrase in there, referencing definitions. Referencing is our verbal and the action of that verb is being transferred to definitions, meaning we have a direct object of the verbal. That entire gerund phrase is working as the OP, even though within that phrase we have the direct object definitions. Now let's look at another couple of examples. My dog with a very broken toy walks with a leash to control its movements. So since we have so much going on in these sentences, I'm going to break it down into separate parts of the prepositional phrases again. We have with a very broken toy. Once again, I've bracketed my um, verbal phrase and we can see here we have a past participial phrase. Our past participle is broken and it's being modified by the adverb very. And so here we have that phrase and it's modifying the OP toy. And then our next prepositional phrase is with a leash to control its movements. Here we have an infinitive phrase bracketed and that action of the verbal is being transferred to movements. That is the direct object of the phrase. And so here we can see that this infinitive phrase is modifying the OP leash. Let's look at one more example. Her project for researching current events will cover South America. Um, as you progress through the booklet, what we're going to ask you to do is just identify the prepositional phrase and then the phrase within the phrase. So what I'm going to have us do in this, because I always like to find the subject and verb to help me narrow down uh, my search, as I'm going to do just that. My subject is project and my verb phrase is will cover. And of course we have South America as our direct object, but after finding the subject and the verb, it's quite obvious our prepositional phrase is for researching current events. So I'm going to rewrite that on the line provided, and then I'm going to bracket my verbal phrase. So I'm gonna bracket researching current events. My verbal is researching and current events is within that same phrase because events is the direct object of what's being researched. So that's what you will do for part of the booklet in 5N. Now we'll cover a positives and a positive phrases because that will take up the other part of this booklet. So we'll look at the explanation page. And a positive is a noun or noun phrase that renames another noun in the sentence. So another noun could be subject, could be DO, OP, IO, PN, could be all of those things. Um, so whenever you have an appositive or an appositive phrase, it will always pl be placed directly after the modified noun. So it's pretty easy to find because you'll have essentially a double noun or a phrase following a noun. Let's look at just an appositive by itself. My sister, Sarah, is a student. Sarah is the appositive. It's renaming who my sister is. Whereas the next sentence we have, my sister, a math teacher, has the summer off. The appositive phrase, a math teacher, is renaming who my sister is. Notice that we will provide the commas around the appositives. In general, you want to use commas around appositives when the information provided with the appositive is not essential to the meaning or purpose of the sentence. This can be very wishy-washy depending on your writing style and what you're writing about. So we're not going to teach any hard and fast rules in this booklet. Instead, we're going to start by looking at another example sentence. Monica, a strong athlete, has begun her workout of lifting weights. So what are we going to do here? Of course, we're going to find the subject and verb phrase first. My subject is Monica. My verb phrase is has begun. And now I'm going to circle any and all prepositional phrases. And in this instance, it's just of lifting weights. And then I'm going to bracket all of my verbals and my positives. So first I'll do the appositive. A strong athlete is renaming Monica. And then lifting weights is a gerund phrase and that prepositional phrase. So now what we need to do is we are going to truncate what we've been doing so far with these um, phrases. And we're just going to identify um, whether the phrases are in a positive. 
they're modifying a word or if they're functioning as something and what that thing is. So in this first phrase, we have a strong athlete. We know that this is renaming our subject, a noun. And so I know that this is an appositive. So that's all I need to write on that line. And then lifting weight is a gerund phrase and it is the OP for our prepositional phrase. So it's functioning as something. So I can write OP. And that's about all you're going to do with these verbals and appositives within this booklet. So now we'll diagram some appositives. Here is our sentence. Nibbles, my brown and white hamster, did not eat all of his cut apple. I'm going to find my subject and verb phrase first. So we have nibbles as the subject and did eat as our verb phrase. And what is being eaten? All. All is our direct object. And now what we can do is identify our phrases. So I'm going to bracket this because this is renaming nibbles, my brown and white hamster. And then our prepositional phrase of his cut apple, which is modifying all. And so now we can start our diagram. We have our nice long line and we're going to intersect that to have a subject and predicate. And then we have a direct object. So we're going to make a nice short line like this. And of course, that's the core of our sentence. Everything else is modifying the core of our sentence. So um, you'll find out pretty soon um, that when we have an appositive, that appositive will be placed in parentheses on the same line as the noun it is renaming. So in this instance, since it's renaming the subject, it will share the line with nibbles. So all of the modifiers for that noun that is renaming the subject will come off of that part of the line. So I have three modifiers coming off of um, hamster. So I have one, two, three. And then since I have a coordinating conjunction between those two adjectives, I need to make a nice dotted line. And then of course I do have a modifier for my verb phrase and then a prepositional phrase for my direct object. With that prepositional phrase, I have another two modifiers. One, possessive pronoun. And the other is a past participle, so I need a curved line. And now we can start filling it out. So like I mentioned, our subject is going to share the spot with the appositive. So nibbles is our subject. And then hamster is in parentheses because it's not actually the subject, but it is renaming the subject. So it is a part of it in a way. And then I can put in my verb phrase, did eat, and then my direct object, all. And once again, this is the core of my sentence. Nibbles, hamster, did eat, all. So let's give us some more information to make this sentence flow a little bit better. We have my hamster, uh, it is brown, white, and then and coordinates those. So I put it in between on that dotted line. Not is making this a negative sentence. And then all is being modified by that prepositional phrase. So I fill in of apple and then all of his apple and it's a cut apple. So I write that on the curved line since it's the past participle. And this is how you'll um, diagram this sentence. Once again, remember that prepositional phrase, all of it together works as a modifier for all. So the entire phrase acts as an adjective and that will be the diagram for this sentence. If you have any questions about this or anything else about grammar, please contact the person who grades your grammar at your center.